welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, I wanted to do a final video on the uh, tower and the ham shack for you and just talk about it a little bit and maybe fill in some gaps uh, that weren't quite explained in the last video. So here we go. Uh, of course, uh, we finalized the tower and put it up. I've got a previous video that shows that even shows how we dug the hole and positioned the uh, base and all that. So you can check that out uh, on one of the Telescope Man websites, uh, video sites. And the tower is a Rhone 25G. It's guide, of course. And it's uh, the tower itself is about 35 feet or so, and the antenna's up there about 37 feet. It's a Mosley 33 uh, Classic with a 40 meter kit on the driven element, which is the element in the middle. Uh, the one that appears to be longer than all the rest of them. Right now the beam is pointed uh, south and I gotta say that uh, Murphy struck us a few times during this installation, but after about a week, we managed to figure out uh, what was going on. I'm just showing you one of the anchors uh, down there, about four feet in the ground. And I uh, bought these anchors at Tractor Supply, believe it or not. Uh, <clears throat> very, very nice anchors, about four feet long. I did take the anchor, which uh, you can just barely see the ring uh, above the grass there the ring on the on the anchor I did take him to a welder and had him weld the eyes of the anchor uh, completely closed so did that with all three anchors we thought we were gonna have a problem with it clearing the house uh, the guy wires but that didn't turn out to be true but we did have Murphy strike us a few times. I'm going to show you uh, what those problems were and just maybe that'll help you uh, in the future if you decide. Okay, so here's a little bit closer shot of the base. Three by three by four feet deep. Got gravel in the bottom. Uh, rebar all through it. Uh, you notice the three copper uh, ground straps going down. Uh, to three eight-foot ground rods, which are all interconnected underground uh, in, in a loop around this tower base. And they're all interconnected with heavy gauge uh, grounding wire. Uh, eventually, uh, I'm going to run a leg. I'm going to come out from this one and run out to here approximately and put another ground rod right here then I'm gonna make a left hand turn and I'm gonna go down there right on the other side of that gate is the grounding rod for the mains and I'm gonna attach it to the mains that's the only thing I really have left to do not very much and that way the tower itself will be attached to the uh, mains ground for the uh, house by doing that, so that's my final step. Uh, Try to do that in the next within the I next one. I just wanted to show you this little array solution uh, grounding box. Uh, that was where our first problem was, and uh, we looked at it <laughs> over a period of four or five days, and you know went up there and looked at all the eight wire connections to the grounding box. Couldn't see anything wrong. Uh, at all and discovered after we detached everything that the yellow wire had broken uh, inside of the insulation there uh, where it, it comes out into the little fork little small fork mount that you put on the uh, screw and you couldn't tell you could jerk on it and everything nothing happened but as soon as you unbolted it the wire fell out so one of my Murphys was I had a broken yellow wire 
one of the eight wires going to the rotor so and that was causing looking the, the other way i still have my comet gp9 that i'm using for uh, uh vhf uhf uh, get good signal reports off of it and I'm about 45 miles outside of Dallas, but I can hit the repeaters in Dallas using this antenna. Everybody suggested I move it to the top of the tower. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't do that. I said it works just fine. I can hit everything I want. I don't want to complicate this more than I need to. We're just going to leave it right here. And you know, it's very well positioned. Here comes the cable. It's got a messenger line on it. And of course, it drops down into the house here and into the shack through the pass-through panel, uh, as do uh, all the antennas. They all come in the house through an MFJ pass-through panel. Now, notice on the panel, I did uh, uh, upgrade the panel ground. All right, you can see the copper strap uh, that I changed from a wire to a copper strap to ground the panel which gives me a little bit better ground for the shield of all the coax. The coax shields of course when you tighten them down there they're uh, on to the panel and then the panel is grounded back over to the uh, uh, ground rod. So. Uh, panel is well grounded. The shields are well grounded now and uh, should be okay. And then of course you can see the braid coming out which is clamped down there on the near the ground and that's my main uh, grounding for the equipment in the shack. Now, I've had some people write me and say you know you you can't use that. You have to use a three-prong in the wall. Well, I'm not talking about the electrical grounding. Of course, I use a three-prong plug. All the equipment is three-prong plugged and uh, is grounded, of course, into the house ground. Uh, that's an electrical ground. This is uh, RF ground here. All right. So. Um, <clears throat> has nothing to do with the three-prong plug on the equipment, the electrical equipment inside. All right, that's all grounded uh, into the house. My house ground is just fine. They wired it correctly and uh, of course the uh, ground, uh, the third plug on a wire is the ground. So uh, all the equipment is uh, electrically ground grounded uh, through the uh, uh, fuse panel in the garage so and then all that goes outside to that uh, mains uh, ground rod so the house is properly grounded no problem there this is RF ground uh, something for the amp to work against the tuner to work against keeps RF out sends it uh, out here there's no ground loops inside. It's a single point ground inside that comes straight out about four feet long uh, is all the length of the, of the braid and it comes right out here. Now if I ever notice this braid deteriorating, I'm just going to replace it. If it starts looking bad, uh, I'll just replace it. I do have a lot of copper strap left Next time I replace it, I might use copper strap that I have uh, left over from the roll that I used to do the tower. So one of these days I may change that braid out to copper strap, but that's not going to be okay, any time. We're in the shack again, and uh, just give you a quickie on the shack. Uh, let's do a little pan around. See, there's the ALS 600, which my is my amp. And I still have the uh, Collins equipment over here and uh, use that about once a week to check into a Collins net. Kind of neat. Uh, still have the ICOM 7000 and the Flex Radio which you can see right there. 
which is attached to the computer. Everything seems to be working great. Uh, that's an old uh, uh, SB uh, uh, shortwave receiver that I had and I just like to tune around on it every once in a while. That's that box right here. Let me give you a close-up of that. It's in pretty good shape. It's Holocrafters. Uh, SB80 I believe is the number on it. And I just tune around and play with it. I uh, found it on eBay at a pretty good price and had a fellow I know check it all out. And he's got it running top notch. And some of the other equipment. There's the ICOM 7000 the scanner. Uh, there's the new uh, rotor box uh, right there. And that's the second one. That was my other Murphy. The original box had a problem. And even after changing the capacitor in it, it would rotate uh, the test rotor that we had in the shop. Would rotate it okay, but the meter never indicated direction. So that box has been returned to the seller. He's going to swap me out with another box. And uh, then I'll have a backup for this box. Uh, let me kind of reach back here a little bit. See if I can do this and show you the Jones plug. There it is right there. Uh, kind of a quick disconnect if the weather's bad. I can unplug this and disconnect the uh, equip this equipment from the rotor itself. Installed a little Jones plug on there to do that. Anyway, that's how the shack looks right now. Everything's pretty good. Everything's working good. Still don't have any RF in the shack. Uh, everything seems to be working fine. Uh, I did install another switch behind this desk. So, antenna switch. So I can switch between the Mosley beam and the uh, QSO King. Uh, long wire which I still have up outside I can throw the switch and uh, switch between the Mosley and the long wire that just gives me uh, basically uh, the capability to transmit on and or listen on all the bands that are out there because that's a 160 through 6 meter uh, QSO King in fed a uh, long wire that I still have. 127 feet long. Anyway, that's how the shack looks now. I wish you all 73 as I usually do in clear skies. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See you all under the night skies and on the radio. See you all later.